are no rules in cooking. Taste this. Hey, I'm David Rosengarten. I'm a food writer, cookbook author, eater in general. I asked a couple of my buds to join me this afternoon. We're gonna make a little lunch together. Uh, this is Rob McHugh, uh, Chef Rob McHugh. Good chef. And this is my friend Joseph Minera, who is a, uh, he's from a couple of uh, big TV operations, Foodie TV, and Taste This TV. And we're all gonna cook something different and uh, eat it. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. I'm starving. You guys ready? I'll never shy away from food. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> all right, so we're here, and everyone is really hungry. We have Dave here, we have Rob here. Everyone's doing a different dish now. Dave is gonna start with his incredible linguine white clam. That's to be seen, right? But I think it's pretty good. Now, I even heard that you got these clams this morning. You fished them out yourself. Oh, I did, that's right. Yeah. I dug them out with my toes. <laughs> no, I didn't. That's the best way to do it. But we went to a good um, seafood store on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. We oh, got really, really fresh. Go. Um, Fort Linguini with white clam sauce, which is one of my holy grail dishes. I mean, to me, it's one of the great dishes in the world, and I'm always searching for good ones. Um, it's, I'm a purist about it. I don't want white wine. I don't even want red pancakes. I don't want other herbs. I just want clams, garlic, olive oil, little parsley. Just the way it was intended like it. to be. The way nature intended it, don't definitely. Um, and I also, I don't mess around with the little cockles and the little, you know, salt, uh, hard shell clams. So I like to get big clams and cut them up and cook them in such a way so that they're practically raw when they're in the sauce. You'll see, I think it works out really nicely. So I have great. here a whole bunch of um, fresh cherry stones. It's time yeah. to get the hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's time to get the hands dirty. With clams, of course. And I'm gonna ask you guys to help me chop these up. Sure. And I'm gonna show you a chop in one second. Okay. While I describe the rest of this dish. Rob, this yes, is your clam Thank portion. You. Okay, so notice that the clams have uh, one edge that's kind of ruffled, like right there. That edge, see that edge? I like to distribute that edge. Each of these big clams should have three pieces, and I like to cut it this way so that each piece has a little bit of that crazy edge. That uh, gives a more consistent chew to all the clams. And you see, I'm done, boom, and that's done. it. And I'm gonna pop it in there, and you guys do the same, so I'm collecting clams from you. Let's put that right over there. Um, meanwhile, while you guys are cutting up clams, I wanna tell you about the other most important part of this dish, and that is the now, <laughs> how many times have you had linguine white clam sauce in a restaurant and you said something like, it's not clammy enough, we're taking care of that, or it's not garlicky enough? I go berserk in making sure that there's enough garlic flavor in this well, thing. Or the garlic is not cooked enough. That's yeah, right. the garlic is that? not cooked enough. They just kind of throw raw garlic in there and hope for the best. And you're right. Yeah, and it's such a different taste. I mean, garlic has a different flavor at every level of cooking. So I do three things in the morning on the day of cooking this dish. What I do is I take a lot of garlic. I mean, this is practically a head of garlic. Uh, peel it, and then I cut it extremely thin, like they do in what movie? Razor. Good guys. Fully cut it. Just enough to liquefy with a little bit of oil. Well, Don't forget that line. You do that for me? These are fast clam people. So anyway, I cook it in a lot of olive oil, as you can see, and uh, slowly until, until it just starts to turn a little brown, a little yellow. I don't mind when garlic takes color. I don't want it to take too much color, except in one case. So anyway, I let that sit there all day. Now, how did all you day. slice that garlic? What? How did you slice it? With, yeah, with, with a razor blade? No, no, I didn't. Did no, really? But with a good sharp wow. knife, yeah. The only so, guy that takes three hours to slice garlic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's worth it, huh? What, it is, it what is. better do you have to do with your time than that? I gotta get your schedule. Yeah, I do. I do. So I sit, I let that sit there all day, and the oil picks up great garlic flavor. Then I also brown some um, garlic, whole cloves of garlic that have been peeled in a little bit of olive oil. They're gonna get tossed in later for another level of garlic flavor. Wow. And then I take some finely minced garlic and I saute that in olive oil in a heavy pan until it gets all kind of brown and. and you know, crusty and crispy. stuff like crispy. Wow. Yeah, crispy. So you know that in the south of Italy, they often put breadcrumbs on top of pasta. Mm -hmm. So this is my breadcrumbs, except it's garlic. You know, in mm -hmm. Sicily, I don't know if it, they take batarga. You know the batarga? They take the, the row and dry shave tuna, it. the row, and they shave it right over. And, and it's like everywhere you go in Sicily, you yeah. Can, Batarga, batarga, and you're like, all right, enough of it. Where's it? You know, <laughs> because really, people should not put Parmesan cheese Never. on top. Like they don't do it in Sicily, definitely. Oh, that's going to give a nice crunchy element to the dish. I like that. Hey, and it's going to bring it all together. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I was in Sicily a couple weeks ago, 
and I had a dish at a restaurant in Taormina where the butarga was cured by the chef of the restaurant. They said, he made this with red tuna and he put it up to cure two weeks ago. Wow. Like, Whoa. I really got to get your schedule. <laughs> I know, they're so into it. So, um, Anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you at this point. When we start to cook, you'll see we're going to cook the pasta. We're going to combine the leftover clam juice from the uh, raw clams with this. And we're going to just sort of pull everything together. It's very simple, very pure. So everything's going in there, Dave. Uh, yeah. The pot of magic, so to speak. Yes. And then we're, we're going to cook this kind of when the last dish is done, right? Yep. To, yep. So you avoid any overcooking of the pasta. Right. Um, I, I can't wait. What's the next move? Yeah, this is as simple as it gets, mm -hmm. but it looks amazing. I, I think we should just, you know, get the water up. Let's go. Yeah, and then um, as soon as the water's ready, we'll pop the pasta in. Then we're like, what, 12 minutes away? So like that's right. Yeah. Now, is there any reason why they be using cast iron skillet for this? Um, you don't have to by any means. But I just want to make sure, look how nicely these are done evenly. So, you know, other skillets that are not as, um, as um, heavy as this, right. they have hot spots. And you might burn some of the garlic and not burn some of the garlic. I get a very nice even color in the cast iron pan. Good tip by Dave. Yep. Nice. I love it. it. Smells great. All right. So what's the next move? Well, um, that's pretty much it on this point until the pasta is done. So okay, we right. should go on to dish number two. Well, oh, coming up, right. dish number two is Rob's incredible famous braised short ribs that we've been smelling for the last couple of hours <laughs> here. Getting, because with the magic of television, we have the raw product. Um, and we also have the finished product in the oven. But you're doing something special with like an accompaniment with that, right? Yeah, yeah, this time of year, oddly enough, you, you don't think pumpkins at this time, but actually it's there, are, all the pumpkin ale starts to come out and, right. uh, mm -hmm. around this time. So I, I wanted to take these short ribs down with a nice uh, chocolate kind of pumpkin-y stout. Oh, nice. To uh, give it a different flavor profile and really caramelizes onto the meat beautifully and it just gives some great flavor. Notice the chef use of the preposition. We're gonna take the short ribs down. To be a chef, yes. you gotta use, so, I'm not gonna plate it. I'm gonna plate it up. I'm gonna plate it down. You know what? Just okay. Anyway, it's how we it's how we say. It. Of course, yeah. it's a lingo we know. If you need subtitles for that, we can add that later, perhaps. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I just I whipped up some beautiful uh, cheddar grits just to really show that color, chocolatey kind of uh, flavor profile coming out of the sauce. And uh, we're gonna eat that, and uh, I know we're gonna enjoy that. All right. Well, we're gonna get cleaned yeah. up and go on to Rob's Bray short ribs, so don't go anywhere. Okay, so when you know that you're about 14, 15 minutes away from serving this uh, linguine with white clam sauce, that's when you want to start cooking the pasta. Just make sure that the water is at a rolling boil. And you know, you have this dish in Italy, it's a little different in some ways. They often serve it with spaghetti. But we, we in Italian America, New York City, we like to do it with uh, linguine. Okay, here we go, going right in. And it's an important thing when you get the pasta in the water. You want the water to come back to a boil as quickly as possible. Um, so the other important thing in the early going is, you know, take your, your pasta grabber <clears throat> or whatever you got and get in there and make sure that the strands are separated. While that's working, um, you want to do the last part of the, the clam sauce. So I have here, you perhaps recall that I had a nice pot, I mean a saute pan of a lot of olive oil and uh, a lot of uh, razor thin garlic, that's right in here. And you wanna bring that up to a boil. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the clam juice, the raw fresh clam juice to that oil. Now here's the deal. Some people, you know, I, I divide the world of um, clam sauce, linguine clam sauce, into three categories. One, there's a brothy sauce. Uh, you've probably had it in a restaurant. It's just like broth in your bowl. Then there's an oily sauce, and it's like all oily, and I think it's a little too greasy and oily. Then some people make kind of a creamy sauce. That, don't do the creamy sauce. That's real American, not at all Italian. Uh, but what I like to do, what I discovered some years ago, is if you combine the broth, by which you mean really fresh clam juice comes right out of the clam when you shuck it, and you combine the right amount of olive oil, you get something really special. You'll, you'll see the texture in a few minutes. <clears throat> and as soon as this comes up to a little bit of a bubble, I like to add this, you know, as if I'm making an emulsion. I call it an emulsion. And it gets a little thickened, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, all right, I think it's, we can start to do it now. I see some bubbling happen, happening there. So I do it kind of slowly, because I really want to get this kind of emulsified. And, you know, what's going to happen when that pasta is done 
is I'm going to drain it. By the way, this would be a good moment to look at it to make sure it's not sticking. It's coming back to the boil. And good. It's all separate strands and nothing is sticking to the bottom. That's great. That's nicely up. So watch this. This goes in. And it kind of, it kind of really an emulsification, but it kind of, kind of gets a little, this broth gets a little thick from all that oil. And um, in my recipe, which you'll be able to see, I have like what I think is the golden ratio of exactly how much oil to how much fresh clam juice. When this comes up to the boil, then you can hold it for a few moments, then it's, it's basically ready to go. Like right now, it's ready to go. All right, well up next, Rob's famous short ribs. Rob, tell us what you got here. Mm. Wow. Coming with yeah. secrets. Well, yeah, I have a couple little secrets. One, I have these, first off, you gotta start with really good short ribs. Those look good. This is, <laughs> this is a really good start. Um, and second, I love to, just before getting on the, the searing and, and getting on with the, the whole process, I love to let them come out into room temperature. That's mm. good, as you know, a lot of people might not know, to get your meat nice and warm before you sear. Let it relax. Let it relax a little bit, as you know. Um, That's a good so, tip. A lot of people might not Yeah, know. a lot of people at home should understand that you gotta let that come to yeah. like a nice room temperature. So don't be afraid of it. It's a good quality meat from a great butcher. You so you let it sit work. out and then you season it exactly. while it sits out. Yeah, and we're gonna get to that part now. I love to get a good uh, room temp, and then I just like to bring it over to the board, and I'm just gonna get a really nice, maybe David can actually join in there with me a little bit. Sure. Are we hands. seasoning? Let's season it up. Okay. Let's get really heavy. All sides? All sides. A lot of salt or a medium? A lot of salt. We're gonna get a nice Dude, crispy I crust Wrong onto that, this. Um, don't be afraid to over season at this point. This is not, uh, this is, these short ribs are gonna go on a journey. It's gonna be a journey. <laughs> journey my it's belly. gonna be a long journey. And yes, the journey to the belly is the final destination. But getting a good seasoning on it and just getting really good pepper. pepper onto that is really good. I like to get a nice, do it all over the place. You really prefer long. black as opposed to? Uh, I do. For this one, I do. Um, yeah, so after we're done I'm getting some nice cracked pepper onto here, it's more than enough. Um, just like to get these guys going. So at this point, I want to get a nice pan going, which I have started over here. And we're going to get some canola oil. I like to use canola oil for this uh, purpose of searing. I think I like that. I like the heat content that it can get up nice and high. Um, you can get this. What you really want to just put them down and get them nice and crusty. You know that crusty sear you yeah. obtain? It's, it's, it's the best way to go. Um, and then we just turn them. Real simple, just a good hard sear on both sides. Not to touch it. Don't touch it, don't be afraid of it. At this point, it almost is like you can't really even burn it at this point, because right. it's really locking in the flavor. Oh, and yeah. this is what's gonna take us on the beginning of our journey. And then we're gonna get our mirepoix. We're gonna render out some of the fat from the short rib. And then what we're going to do, this is the most best part. I usually like to take a good sip of this at this point, but uh, we'll, do it. we'll save it for later. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, I like to deglaze the whole pan with this, and this is a chocolate pumpkin stout. Uh, more, more like uh, the smell on this. And is you can smell that right there. Man, get a take a whiff of that. This one's strong too. Yeah. This guy will run you about 11 percent alcohol by volume. So that's a I, lot uh, for a beer. That's like twice as much as most beer. It really is. It's crazy. Um, and I love that because this is what through oh, the cooking the process it really just kind of penetrates the meat and glazes over and you get this chocolatey feel. Yeah. Um, it's a great texture. Of course, when they call that chocolate, there's no chocolate. In no, it. it's there's just not. The color it's it. just the color of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and really what it does is it's, what's surprising is this is kind of almost what you get. Give it a little dippy in there, Dave. Oh, you can with cheat. Pleasure. You can cheat. This is where we're gonna get. Want you? It's like a chocolate dip finger. Oh man. And I always recommend good, huh? no double dipping. <laughs> Even if I use another finger. Well, then you can. <laughs> Taste the bitterness of the beer. Now. Yeah. Is that this know, whole thing reduced? Yeah. So this is this whole. Um, this is about three thirty-two ounces total, and this will end up That's being all. here, and that's how you get in the end. And you don't, Reduction. It, it's really, really yeah, strong. Nice. And glazing on these three, you know, you're thinking these guys are gonna be in there the whole time, look at it, two and a half hours by the time these all come together. That's what the hard sear protects the inside, and that's why you wanna get a good crispy hard sear, which I'm gonna show you. And, you know, just taking it down and uh, time. Just taking waiting, it, waiting, taking waiting, it down, Dave. Taking it down, Dave. Taking it down. We gotta do a separate show. Take a little bit more of this down, if you don't mind. No, no problem. That was the index finger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Notice, do not. Everybody at home's paying attention to that. <laughs> 
Um, and it's just a few simple ingredients that I basically take when I, after I do see it, I want to render out some of that fat and then I want to get some onion, carrot, celery, just to pick up on that mirepoix, a little bit standard, a little bit of thyme, some garlic, uh, chicken stock and beer, and we're going to get in there and we're going to take it down two and a half hours, pull it out. Chicken stock, it, not beef stock. That is chicken. Yeah, because right. you want to lighten it. I mean, homemade. more beef would be like too much. Enough with the beef already. Yeah, enough with the beef. <laughs> give chicken a chance. You've got to give chicken a chance. <laughs> let's get these guys into a nice ripping hot skillet, and let's get a good sear on these guys, and let's begin the journey of our short yes. rest. We get to eat, and we call it a journey. I love that. Journey. Mm -hmm. How else can you explain it? <laughs> awesome. I'm, yeah, while he's searing, how about if I uh, open oh. a little uh, open away, vino? I've been waiting away. all day for this. All right, I knew you once I have something to do, he wants to open the wine. I mean, Gotta get on. that wine involved. There it is, the wine. Uh, uh, Dave, that's your wine. Yeah, no, but you're absolutely right. This is my wine in the sense I'm importing it. So, um, I, you know, I did what I do, which is write about food and wine for many years, but just a couple years ago I decided Maybe be fun to start importing some of my own wine. That's the I kind of wine I like. I'm really looking forward to trying. You guys yeah. are starting to drink when I have to go to work. I have to yeah. You can oh, drink okay. and sear at the same time. Of course, yeah, yeah. it's my yeah. favorite part. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a wine from uh, northern France. I bring in wine from all over the place. Germany, Italy, a lot of wine. But this one is from France, a pretty good wine country. And it's, um, it's a Chablis, basically. But, you know, in that town of Chablis, they make it at different levels from like real expensive to not too expensive. Right. This is the not too expensive. It's called Petit Chablis, Little Chablis. Ah. But I think it's got wonderful acidity and a kind of stoniness, and I think it just goes great with food. So it's perfect for the linguine white clam sauce. Perfect. I better go with your dish yeah, too. Yeah, go with the scallops yeah. as well. Yeah, they are very short. And uh, uh, even oh, Rob. You, oh, wow. Yeah. What were you going to say, I was going to say, when you put the word petite in, in front of a wine, it automatically sounds like it's going to taste good. Right, <laughs> I think so. Mm -hmm. Petite David Rosengard. Petite. Impossible. No? <laughs> so we have the wine. We have the gray short rib searing on both sides. We're going to get cleaned up. Up next, sear scallops. Ooh. We are in for a real treat. All right, so now we're ready to get started on a braised scallop dish. I really should say sear. Uh, and really what makes this dish special is the bacon and the truffle honey. Oh. Yeah, good. it gets you right here. Room. Yeah. So, Chef, can I, you probably have the best knife skills here. Can I get oh. you to, to really finely dice Absolutely. That, uh, that bacon? It's an honor. And then, uh, Dave, if you could help me maybe season that side of uh, the scallops. We're going mm -hmm. salt, pepper, Okay. both sides. This mm -hmm. is a really simple dish here. What you do is just you take the scallops, you sear them with a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter. They're well seasoned on both sides. And the, the bacon actually gets mixed with the truffle honey and gets put on top of the scallop. You almost have that surf and turf taste. What's really special about it is you get the saltiness from the bacon yeah. and the sweet flavor from the honey. And Joe, you wanted pepper. Can you talk to the pepper? Absolutely. Wee, wee, wee. If you could smell the pepper, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's the flavor's coming off, it's already easy. And of course, there's no such thing is using any other salt except kosher salt. That's it must right. be kosher salt, especially with this. You could, I wouldn't even use sea salt for this. Uh, How far do you want to go? You like most of that? these, a uh, little bit more if you could. Sure. Uh, go all the way if you want. Definitely remove mm. yes. muscle here. So How people don't know that. Jim, he I'm know. sorry. Does the kosher salt, salt go with the bacon? Is that the way it works? Oh, oh. They, they go hand in hand. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> Extra yeah. salty on uh, B3 over there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. All right, so now we're going to sear these. You know I have I just, to do this, right? Oh, absolutely. That, yeah. There's no way around that. Now, Chef, you can just put some of those uh, sure. things in there. You've got a sweet stroke. Oh, see, that's why I've heard that before. <laughs> Thank you. Dave? Gotcha. No chef. Okay, are we ready to go? We are. We're gonna do this together? There you go. Cheers. Get me comfortable, right? For a second, I don't know if I was still in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you, Joe? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Slide me in the back of the neck. I'm back to reality. I love it. You up. I really great. love it. All right, guys, how did you come to this 
combination? What, what made you think of it? I worked at I worked with Danielle years ago at the Cirque, and we were doing his scallop black truffle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we had some bacon that we got left over from cooking the guy's breakfast. His bacon left over. I had bacon. Yeah, it was bacon left over. Kitchen, I put the bacon with the scallop. I said, Wow, this is really a good combination. And then the truffle honey. Just truffle was already on. there, and honey was another leaf thing. Yeah, the truffle honey was in Jacques Torres' kitchen. All right, we made a, lot, a lot of leaves that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna take the scallops. We're gonna sear them on both sides to perfection. And then we're gonna taste the incredible dishes that Dave and Rob made together, and we're gonna have one hell of a day. This is gonna be a great day. I mean, bacon, wine. You guys ready? Can we do it now? Absolutely. <laughs> Probably about five minutes. Okay. All right. Don't go anywhere. All right, now we're gonna taste these three dishes, and you got three guys here who are really hungry and ready to taste. Um, we're gonna have a little bit of wine with these dishes. I think it's gonna go with all three. We'll talk more about that later. But again, this is my Petit Chablis, voila. Please, thank you. And I know it's gonna go with the linguine clam sauce, which is the first dish, the dish I made. Um, so a uh, quick recap is that this is the purists linguine with white clam sauce. No tomato, of course, but there's no wine, there's no extra herbs other than there's a little pars parsley. There's about three layers of garlic in it and very fresh, just cooked clam. So it's got a really clammy flavor and texture. So I'm gonna go it's in, good. the boys go in too. Mm -hmm. Let's get in here. Voila. As they say in my house, it's not gonna eat itself. <laughs> sure. Mm. I know you've had many a linguine with white clam sauce, but what do you think? It comes I'll together. tell you what really pops is that dried garlic. I know, I know. That right? crunchy dried really garlic really on top. Man. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm glad you boys Absolutely. enjoyed that. Wow. Let's go wow. on to the beef. <clears throat> wow. wow. Still <laughs> like a stun gun, that dish. You'll still have it tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm all right with that. So, yeah, just to recap on my dish, um, we got that good, hard sear on that meat, you know, really penetrated it solid, get the crust on there. And then we basically hit that mirepoix using the actual fat from the short rib and rendered out. And we took that mirepoix down really, really nice and hard, hit it with that stout. Then we uh, basically got it into the oven, two and a half hours. Boom, strain it. Nice. Get that sauce back in the pan, because we want to bring all that flavor coming out of it. And then we get it in there, maybe another hour, not even, sometimes 40 minutes, and then you get that really nice syrupy kind of finish. And, syrupy. It um, literally, literally falls off the bone. And uh, we're going to try this now. Let's do it. Uh, and we don't yeah. even need knives. We do don't need a knife. And let's get into eating this. All right, thing. man. You go first. Oh, please. <clears throat> let's wow. get right in here. Oh, a knife needed. Look at that cut. Yeah. I'm just going to get right in here. Beautiful in there. Joe. Go. Oh, mm. Okay. Mm. Just, oh, man. I love the way that cuts. I forgot to mention, just for fun, since you invited me over today, uh -huh. I threw in some cheesy um, New York State cheddar grits at the base of it, just to give it a little body and flavor to that. So get a, get a pull on that grit. This one I think is perfect. Are you good with it? Oh, really good with it. That is an honor. Thank okay. You, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. All righty. All right, next up, scallops. Mm -hmm. wow. Seared scallops. Um, so when you think of scallops, you know, uh, scallops are that kind of neutral fish that can go good with anything. And salt and sweetness is what I've done with this combination. So I've taken the apples uh, and I've caramelized them in a little bit of butter, a little bit of cinnamon, uh, and a little bit of kosher salt to help bring the flavor of the apples out. So I've taken the scallops, seared them on both sides, seasoned with salt and black pepper. And then we have our chopped bacon thinly, thinly sliced and diced, you know, brunoise, if you want to call it. And it's molded into that truffle honey, which really gives mm. it that flavor. And that goes on top of the scallops, too. So, gentlemen, dig in. I can do it. Mm -hmm. But you want the thyme leaves in the bite, or no? No, not at no, all. No, no, no. Okay. It's just there for a little. Ooh, OK. I'm ready. Go ahead, Don't dig let in. that bacon escape. Oh, you yeah. need, the, ba need the bacon. Need the bacon. Bacon is really, <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't come in right away. It's a surprise. Right. Oh, and then yeah. boom, or yeah. bam, or something, yeah. <clears throat> that truffle in the back end, really, yeah. and then the honey. And the sweetness from the apple is continuously on your top. It is oh. delicious. Well, this has been absolutely fantastic. We had some incredible linguine, braised short ribs and scallops. Gentlemen, thank you so much for, having, for having me being on the thank show. You. David, mm -hmm. thank you so much. For yeah. more information on these incredible chefs, mm -hmm. you can check out the website. Thank you for watching this fun-filled episode of Taste This TV. I'm your host, Chef Joe Simonera. Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.